Hi and welcome to this week's web design video blog. Coming up we have a technique for converting JPEG logos into vector graphics using Adobe Illustrator. And our tip for business owners is how to reduce spam being sent from your website. But first, Yellow Pages is poised to launch their new compact directory. Pretty much all advert dimensions have been changed and the book is set to be smaller, thinner and more condensed. The first compact Yellow Pages will be rolled out in Oxfordshire earlier this year and eventually to the rest of the UK. This may be another obvious sign that the UK's customers and consumers are more actively seeking for their products and services online instead of using traditional printed media. With the recent introduction of technology such as netbooks, smartphones and even new tablet computers like the iPad, we can only assume that the future of lead generation from small to medium businesses is going to come from online sources. This week's web design tutorial is how to convert basic JPEG logos into vector artwork. So for this tutorial I've sourced two different images. I've got a quite simple black and white logo and I've got the slightly more complex Coca-Cola logo. So when um, doing this technique with logos it's better to get the largest file size possible with the JPEGs. So all I've done is gone to file and place to place my two graphics onto the page so that I convert them in Illustrator to vector graphics. If we start with the uh, simple uh, black and white logo here, all you have to do is select it and then click on live trace. And you might have just seen that then jump from being a pixelated graphic to now a vector shape. If I zoom into the Coca-Cola logo for example, you'll still see that this one is very pixelated, but now our black and white logo is now a vector illustration. What this also does is converts it into black and white. So in order to separate the black logo from its white background, what we then want to do is go to expand, and then you want to ungroup the various layers until the ungroup option becomes unavailable. This will then allow you to take the uh, part that you want away from the white background. As you can see there, there's the leftover white part that we can delete. If you have a, uh, a logo that's got slightly more colours, um, you know, in this example it works obviously better when you've just got a white background with a one colour logo on top, you can play around with the live trace settings to achieve the result that looks as good as possible. So next if we zoom in, we'll do the Coca-Cola logo next. So as you can see, it's still very pixelated. Click on it, click on Live Trace, and it converts the logo for us into vector artwork. So again, in order to separate the various pieces to this, we need to expand and then ungroup the layers until the ungroup option becomes unavailable, like that. So in order to turn the Coco logo back to red, if we simply select the various parts, just that bit there, we can then convert it back to red and obviously then we can take away from the background the red Coca-Cola logo like so. And converting your uh, pixelated JPEG files um, essentially means that you can use them in programs like Flash or in Photoshop and they're of a very uh, high quality because they're vector but they're also a much lower file size. So Live Trace Illustrator can be quite a useful tool for converting your JPEG logos into vector illustrations and I will uh, use, <coughs> sorry, leave the uh, graphics I've used in this example in a zip file on the supporting blog post at creadesign.co.uk forward slash blog. Over the past couple of weeks we've been sharing some of our website tips for business owners. Tip number three this week is how to reduce the amount of spam emails coming from your website. A question that we are often asked by new clients is what measures can be implemented to prevent spam emails and inquiries being sent from our website. On a basic company website, there are usually two primary sources for email spam. The first is the inquiry form on the contact page. If there isn't adequate anti-spam measure on your contact page, then the form is vulnerable to be triggered by automated computer programs known as spam bots. Spam bots troll the internet looking to trick contact forms so they can deliver unsolicited advertising to the recipient. Spam bots that successfully trip the contact form may also record or bookmark your site for future use. One of the best ways to protect your contact form from spam is integrated what is known as a capture. A capture is essentially a challenge or question that discerns spam bots from human users. A capture can take the simple form of a mathematics question, or more commonly, a graphic with a barely visible word or code in it. The human user then completes the challenge by entering the correct response, and if the correct response is not entered, then the form is not triggered and no email is sent. Captures are a reliable method for ensuring human users and not spam bots are behind 100% of emails coming from your website's inquiry form. 
So if you're receiving spam inquiries from your contact forms on your website, you should ask your designer about implementing a capture onto your contact form. Next week's website design tip for business owners will look at the second source of email spam for your website. Thanks for watching this week. If you have any questions, comments or contributions, please leave them on our supporting blog post or on our YouTube channel.